Cell phones have been around for a long time now, and they've made it incredibly easy to capture fast action or new perspectives that larger cameras cannot reach. However, with the GoPro's small size tends to come a trade-off in image quality, but today I'll show you how you can overcome that and make your GoPro footage look beautiful in DaVinci Resolve. If you're interested in downloading the footage I'll be color grading in this video along with the power grades I've created, then I invite you to join my channel membership page, Germani Extended. The membership costs $4.99 on a monthly recurring basis, and with it you'll gain early access to my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, be able to download practice footage, power grades, LUTs, and for certain videos, project files. This video has been available early for members for about a week now, and in addition to the practice footage and main power grade that I'll make in this video, there'll also be three other variations of this power grade available for download. If you're looking to extend your creativity and also support my channel along the way, this is a great way to do it. The link to sign up is in the description of this video. I hope to see you there. Before we begin, I would like to give some recommended settings for your GoPro footage. For the best effect, shoot in the flat color profile with the widest frame possible, the highest resolution possible, and also in the highest bitrate possible. In addition to that, make sure you use manual exposure and white balance if you can, so that way you don't have to worry about that changing in the middle of the shot, which would be harder to correct in post. If you have a GoPro Hero 11 or any newer GoPro that comes out following the release of this video, make sure you are shooting 10-bit video for the maximum amount of dynamic range possible. For this video, all of my footage was shot on the GoPro Hero 9 Black in the flat picture profile with 8-bit color. So for this tutorial, we will have to be mindful of the limitations of 8-bit footage when it comes to color grading. And while this video is specifically covering GoPro footage, the techniques can also be applied to small sensor cameras such as phones and drones. In addition to that, today I'm going to be using a few effects that are exclusive to the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Those effects include motion blur, noise reduction, film grain, and distortion correction. It is possible to add motion blur and distortion correction separately in the Fusion tab if you are using the free version of Resolve, but for the sake of time, I will not be covering that in this video. With that out of the way, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. Once we have our clips on the timeline, we're going to take it over into the color tab. In here, I'll create nine nodes. The first one will be where I add motion blur. If you don't want to add this or don't need to add it, you can skip it, but I did not use ND filters for any of these shots, so I'm going to add motion blur. I'll just label this as MB, and then I'm going to set the motion blur effect to around 25. I found that for static shots like these, I don't need all that much motion blur. For the next node, we'll be correcting the lens distortion of the GoPro to make it look a bit more normal. I'll label this node Distortion. From there, I'll go into the Effects window and search up Distortion. I'll take the effect and drag it onto the node. I found that for the GoPro Hero 9 Black, a value of 0.358 works really well. For other GoPros, this may differ, so adjust it to where it looks right for you. We're done with that now, so I'll exit the Effects window and leave that there. I'm going to label the next four nodes Vignette, Grain, Glow, and Base. We'll come back to these four nodes in a moment. For our seventh node, I'm going to label it CST, and this will be where we place our color space transform. I shot this footage with the flat profile on the GoPro Hero 9 Black, but that's not an option in the color space transform, so it doesn't matter too much. We'll search for the color space transform effect and add it to the node. Regardless of whether you shoot in the flat profile or not, the color space will still be Rec 709. So I'm going to set that as the input color space, and for the input gamma, we'll just do gamma 2.4. For the output settings, let's plug in Rec 709 as the color space and Cineon Film Log as the gamma. This will allow us to use the film print emulation lookup table as built in to DaVinci Resolve. Let's go on to our next node and label it LUT. This is where we will place one of DaVinci Resolve's film print lookup tables. From here, we'll right click on the node, go down to LUT, then Film Looks, and then for this one, I'm going to use Rec. 709 Kodak 2383D65. But if it doesn't work well for you, you can also try D60 and D55, which are different color temperatures. This will give us those nice filmic colors that the Kodak 2383 film stock is so well known for, but there is still more work to do. Let's head over real quick to the last node, and I'm going to label this one as ADJ for our adjustments. We'll do additional adjustments here later. As you can see, the footage is looking a little bit bright, so we need to go into our base node and fix the exposure as well as the balance of the footage. 
I'm gonna go into the lift gamma and gain wheels and adjust those and also the highlight slider in order to get the exposure dialed in. Now you should be aware that pulling down the highlight slider will not work for all clips, but for this one, it does the job here and nothing is clipping. But now we need to balance the footage out as it's still looking a little too warm. And this step will vary depending on your footage. But for this clip, I'm going to go to the offset wheel and push it to be more on the bluish magenta side to cancel out some of the warmer tones. Now, I think this looks good overall for the shot, but I'd say that the grass and bushes are looking a little too oversaturated and yellow. So I'm gonna go into the hue versus hue tab and swing yellow to be more on the side of green. And I'll go to the hue versus saturation tab and pull down the saturation of the yellows. If you look at the before and after of this node, you can see it is a substantial improvement to the clip. Now, let's go back to the glow node that we labeled from earlier. This will be our secret sauce, so to speak. And with this node, we will take off the digital edge and we will also smooth out the highlights. So let's go into the effects window and add the glow effect. We'll go down into the composite type option and change the blend mode to soft light. Now we'll scroll back up and take the shine threshold all the way down and do the same to the spread but I'm going to push the spread slightly back out to the right. A value of 0.18 to 0.2 will work best for this shot. Now I am seeing that this is still a little too bright, so I'm gonna go back over into the base node and do additional adjustments to bring down the gain and get it to where it's looking just right. And I think right here we have what we're looking for. Going back into the glow, I'm gonna go over to the color filter and set this to a more warm tone to give the footage a warm Glow. And I found that the exact HTML value of hashtag FFD694 works really well and gives us the nice warm glow that we're going for. But you are certainly welcome to play around with other options. If you'd like to learn more about the glow effect in DaVinci Resolve, I have a whole separate tutorial just for that where you can dive deeper into what is possible with the effect. I'll leave that video linked in the cards above for your convenience. If we disable and re-enable the glow effect, we can see how much heavy lifting it is doing from this grade. It is really helping us to get closer to that desired final look. Now the next step is to add grain. This is an optional effect, but I really like it because it really helps give that filmic look. I'm going to go into the effects panel and type in grain, and I'll take the film grain effect, drag it and drop it onto the clip. From here, I'll go into the film grain presets and change it to 16mm 500T. From there, I'll zoom in on the clip and adjust the grain strength and size to make it where I want it to be. I think it looks good right there. Ultimately, it is a very subtle effect, but I really do like having it on my clips. And aside from that, I think there's only a few more things we need to do. As you can see, the shadows are not looking super balanced, and I'd like to add a little bit more color contrast into the shot. So we'll go over to the adjustments node and go into the log wheels. Here, I'm going to take the shadows and push them to be a more bluish teal. I can zoom in here on the shot to help me get exactly where I want them to be. And I think right there is looking good. This adds a good bit of color contrast from what we had before. And while it may not be the clean look, that's not exactly what we're going for here as I like film emulation. And from here, I think we're 90% of the way to our final look. But as you can see, the edges of this clip are still pretty bright, and that's where the vignette node we made earlier will come in handy. I'm gonna go to that node and create a circular power window and expand it to cover most of the frame. I'll also increase the feather so that it is a softer effect. From there, I'll invert the mask and go over to the lift, gamma, and gain wheels and lower the lift, gamma, and gain values until it looks good to me. And from that, we can see that this really helps bring attention to the center of the frame where the subject is, which is the box on the porch. And there we have it. We've taken our GoPro footage from looking like this to this. I've taken this power grade and applied it to other clips and it works really well. Generally speaking, the only thing you need to adjust on a clip by clip basis would be the exposure, balance, and also the vignette. From there, you'll be left with a rather spectacular result. Anyhow, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what buttons to click. If you'd like to get your hands on the power grades and practice footage, be sure to sign up for Germani Extended at the link in the description of this video. My name is Raku Germani, Jesus loves you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.